Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to map number four out of five. It's been a long day, but we've got a couple more to go. It's a Star Ladder PUBG first person duo tournament. Obviously, this is the first of many. My name is Hugo. I'm going to be covering the English stream. You can head over to the Russian stream on twitch.tv slash PUBG SLTV if you would so please. But uh, we've had we've had a fun day so far. We've had some good wins. We've had, uh, you know, some some cool strategies and uh and some high action scenarios but look at this drop look at this plane that is ridiculous we've had everywhere today we've had west to east east to west up to down down to right everywhere you know and now we well not end we've got two more but now we have our fourth one all the way across the center so the Severni, rozok i imagine finally we're going to see some school action pashinki novo military base all of this are going to be full of players Places like Lepovka, Primorsk, Zaki, Milta. They're going to be places where people want to reach out, go in vehicles maybe. I mean, we can get to places like Milta just out of the plane. But to get to a place like Primorsk, you're probably going to need a vehicle or to run the last bit. Either way, so much presence towards the military base already. Kills coming in there. So many deaths. I'm not even going to go and try and look at that. As uh, players will start to fall out. We're going to wait for everyone to land first. We actually have a Verz as well going to... Uh, uh, as Verz, sorry, and, and Karma going to um zaki as well staying away from the pack it seems punch dropped right into the military base same with maito as well and uh where's everyone else hmm keen he's going towards georgia paul with mamino i imagine coming soon so this is, a, this is the fourth game in a row i think they've landed there so no surprise from that at all as we wait for everyone to kind of settle in already gunfights going on at the shooting range if we just have a look at that see what's uh see what's going on lots of early loot can be found at the shooting range great for finding guns quickly it's actually gonna be avatar who did a lot of work in clearing up some of the squads in the last game chasing down fuse yet to find a gun we've seen nazgat go down and avatar already left alone already lost his teammate as you can see there's three duos here already one down and nazgat may be wiped out agree Running out of ammo, Fuse desperately trying to find a weapon. And Avatar just running towards the top of the hill. Maybe he does have a teammate somewhere else. Maybe he didn't drop here. But Pash, looking to finish off the job. Oh, going to miss some shots. Eventually we'll do it exactly that. So Pash at least takes down one of the already down players. Now putting into Fuse into an awkward spot on his own. He's going to be chased down. Oh, okay, that's not where I meant to go. And, uh, and Fuse finished off, I imagine, there. So that's going to be the shooting range gained by two players. Avatar still on the top of the hill. He's actually going to be looking down to do some damage here against these guys. Hmm. Not going to be able to land too much. Doesn't want to overstay his welcome. He will fall back. So the shooting range is gained by those players, but nothing too special. Damage going on at the school as well. We've actually had some presence, but only two players dropping on the school. Instead, it's going to be actually outside Rosok where we've had a down player. Freezy dropped in the center. In the open as well, not even in the cover of a building. So he's in a really awkward situation now, as we can see. And Zati can't save him. And right now, Jesse and Seven have got control over Rosluck, it seems. They've got good weapons. Abba, uh, Abasaka coming in from the back lines. And Fruzi at this point is left hung out to dry. He won't be able to survive. Doesn't look like anyone's coming in to be his, uh, his knight in shiny armor. He won't be saving anything. Just yet, that'll be his death. So already a lot of duos have lost singular players in. And we've got the we've got the zone in. It's the opposite of the previous map. We had a right side zone, now we have a left side zone. So it'll be fun to see how this affects things. Now we'll get to see a bit of Georgia pole, maybe some ruins action, which I really do like to see. And uh Zati moving in to pick up the 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 bod uh, the gear off the body of his dead teammate. Now we're going to look to try and take control in Rosak, but he's only got a UMP to play with. Got to move in fast as he starts storming through the center of the village. Doesn't spot seven or a Basker. Oh, sorry, no, Anz uh, Anzati is actually buddies with Chess here, so I've got that wrong. So it must have been a random that died and lost his teammate earlier on. So it's actually a 2v2 here. I think a car 98 just got picked up from Chessie as well, so he's pretty geared now. The issue is that's not great for this kind of range, and he'll find out that shortly. He's already getting tagged down. Abasaka doing work with the M4. Hollow as well. He has the sight, spots the head in the top of the building, and he's just shooting down onto him. Car 98 in response does have a two times, but he's going to be receiving damage as well. Doesn't matter. Abasaka dropped. The car 98 hits the headshot. And now Seven has to come in for support, but he's being wrapped by Anzati. Coming in from the back lines of the UMP, sneaking his way through. And if he can find Seven here and now, drop him. That's already the duo wiped. And Rosok under the control here of this two. 
Chessy, you look like you may have gone down. Seven. I think Anzati knows exactly where he is. Look at the way he's playing around this pillar. Just waiting for seven to go for the peak. Actually, now got to go for the long way round, wrapping all the way through the back side to go to the body of Absaka, who's still alive and kicking, that being said. But seven doesn't realize he's being wrapped. It's now moved into the open. He's going to be taking shots, but here's the flank. Here's when Anzati comes in from the back lines properly. He'll spot him, spraying away. Damage done. Seven still alive, and he's actually running to the building. He's trying to take cover inside in close range where the UZ will be able to do more and more damage, but the AK is pulled out for close range. And Anzati able to finish off that kill, wipe that duo, both players dead. And that'll be Rosak under the control of Chessy and Anzati. Nice control there. Good teamwork. And they're able to take it in their favour. Still the military base there with a lot of presence. Still a lot of players down towards this side of the map. We have 3048 and Roger still standing. And Pudge actually with his teammate Buster. He's going to be on top of the, uh, the big red as well. Got a good sight over the military base. But you're very exposed up here. And that's why he's lying down. Does have a car? Uh, oh no, sorry, it's an SKS with a silencer. That's incredible. That's a really good gun for this kind of position. Issue is, I don't think he actually has a smoke, uh, a scope to play with. So it's going to be Pudge being very careful as he walks through the military base. Got to look out for all these players surrounding him. They're everywhere, crawling over this place like flies. It's Pudge, very, very exposed in this position. He's got players coming in from the back as well and the front. Actually, two coming in from behind. Rogger and thirty forty eight and. Still a solo man left from a duel. It's going to be Suzil. He's already lost his buddy. Buster's come down from the top of Big Red. And we're going to have Felix and Finn start to move away. But look at Pudge. He's very close. Susie's just up in that window as well. But he's going to be holding on. He hears the footsteps. He knows they're running past. But it doesn't matter because these guys are taking shots at the players running up the hill. Finn dropped. Susie going to be able to at least take down Pudge. So that's one kill going the way of this man as he's stuck inside. But now he's going to start to look to clear up these bodies out. Finishes one off with the a mini 14. Pudge gets to some form of cover. But Finn is still up. And while his teammate's been dropped, he can get work done. Car 98 to play with. Not much cover, but everyone is shooting everyone. And Susie will actually kill Pudge and Buster. Both of them taken down. While Pudge has already dropped, he finishes off Buster trying to run towards the building. So Susie has wiped down not only the second place from the first game, but also the first place. Uh, no, the, the second, third place from the second game. I'm, I'm getting the... Um, the game's wrong, at least. But Pudge and Buster have been doing work, is what I'm trying to say. And Suzil will be able to wipe both of them into the top 70. Finn makes a getaway. So he finds himself a bike and wants to just get out of this area. He's got a car to play with, but doesn't really need to go for that extra fight. Not worth it. Because now the military base is going to start to clean up, especially with the zone coming in. Players up in Georgia Pole doing work. But Keen, he's going to be in a fight. He's actually killed someone in the process. I thought he might have been down, but he's separated from Mamino. Can loot the body. As uh, he will be doing so. There's no one here either to stop him. So that's Georgia Pole wiped. But as I say, they're taking shots from across. It's going to be Mr. Batsby with a car 98 up on a high position. Has the 8 times scope as well for range. He's going to just be looking to see what he can find. Nothing apparently is the answer. As he begins to wrap around the backside. Keenan Mamino will have to fight another day. Getting away with that gunfight. The winners of the previous game. Hulkan, he's still alive with KTV. They're separated, but they've got Komeshki in the northern side of the map to themselves. They can loot up there, but they're still outside the zone. So I've got to be aware, they'll need to move eventually. Huintu as well, towards Gakka, the winner of the second match. People are going to start to move in, but look over here. What's Slicker up to? We've got Ds driving on in. Slicker's actually going to be spraying away. Completely terrible observing, but not going to get any damage anyway, so we didn't miss too much here. As they try and stop the car from coming in, they give away their position. They waste a lot of ammo and to no real effect. Dies makes it through. It's actually a down over here. Melman. Up on the hill. Just Veg is going to be dropped, and that leaves Melman alone now. That's awkward. Not sure how, how that happened, at least. It must have been Qwerty shooting down from the western side of Gatka. Now Melman and Just Veg. Oh, sorry, no, they've killed someone else. I completely misread that. Now Melman can get away. Just Veg not teaming with this player either, so Melman's getting out of this one alone. He's finished off one of the players, but Just Veg is looking to try and finish off the kill as Melman drives off, trying to swerve, trying to avoid the headshot that can come through, but Just Veg won't hit it anyway. So it won't matter, but he loses his teammate. Both of them trading one for one. 
Now people are going to start to come up from the south off the military base as well. KTV. Is he even going to survive here? What's going on with this man? He heals up. He's okay. Looked like he was about to die there. We've even got players from Yasnia. This is just so dangerous being in the Yasnia area because they've got to cross all the way through Rozok to get here. Unless they want to go northern side. But even them, northern side's hard because there's a lot of open ground and they've got to cross the bridge through Georgia Pole and get into the white zone. Like There's not a lot of options here. Unless you're coming from kind of Milter or Nova where you can make it across this way, you don't go through the safety, it's pretty bad for these players because... They are they are really just going to have to either go straight through Rozog down below or straight across the bridge in Georgia Pole. But let's go back for some good old bridge camping. We've got two players here. Moto trying to cross as uh, he'll be driving on through. Going to be alone on this one, I think. Actually, he's got his buddy. The bridge hasn't rendered in. So, yeah, there's two of them here. Oof, that was a horrible render. Car crossing, so there's three, four duos. No, sorry, three duos trying to make it cross with the car. Oh no, it knocks the bike back. It might finish off them, but they just stay alive due to the bike. Oh my god, they're getting cornered. Hello? <laughs> that was scary. I thought the car was going to run them over after they downed the two players crossing the bridge, but now they have a vehicle with a little more cover. That being said, they're still Panda towards the end. Why is it doing this? Pando still on the bridge with support as well from Bembic. With the car 98, Pando playing fairly close. But again, he's still outside the zone. He's still got to move in. Moito in a very awkward spot. A bike is up for Pando, and yeah, he's, gonna, he's just going to smoke and get out there. He doesn't want to stay any longer than he has to as he starts to move away with the bike. Pick up his teammate as well. Bembik's just here. He can do exactly that. They can actually get to a safer position, hold the edge. That means Moito have to move through. And they are going to be storming. It's actually Susie coming from the back who still hasn't made his way across. He's going to get shot up. Taken down, it seems, to just low, low HP. But he still needs to heal because, again, he's out the zone. He's just chipped away. Moito going to come up from the back as well. Finishes off the job. Nice work there. His teammate is down in the process. I don't think he's going to be able to pick him up. Look at the health left and look at how low it's going. It's going to be Moito going down, left to only one man. And now on the other side of the, the bridge, these guys are still holding on. Pando's moved out. The job will be finished off as Moito dies outside the play zone and leaves only just one left on the bridge. Bembic and Pando just holding on to this, but they have the rifles for it. We've got a Car 98, we've got a, an SKS. These guys are plenty geared to deal with this gunfight. So when Moito eventually tries to cross, he's going to be going into a world of hurt. The thing is, they don't know where he is. He's still at the back. Option to just jump off. Again, he can just... Go into the water and swim his way, but he hasn't got a lot of time. He's got this little ledge to the left, which is very commonly used to just climbing up and jumping into the water. But not only does he have to swim a long way, but he's then got to run all the way to this white zone. Let's see if he commits to this. They seem to th think maybe either it's not worth their time or he's jumped into the water. Because he's just holding on with the car 98 trying to find an angle. But right as he peeks, they've moved away. And they'll be getting away too. They're not committing with this one. They just want to fall on back. Let him waste more time out the zone as they get to the safety of the white. But look, talking about the white, there's a lot of gunfighting going on here. People starting to move in from Yasnir as well in the meantime. I wonder if Mamino is still active as well. With Keen, they are. They're actually sitting just below the mountains. There's actually gunfights in the middle of Gatka. Qwerty and Kimi and Electro Panda. Other side of Gatka. Up on the building sits Q uh, Qwerty and Cross as they hold onto the roof. And Kimi and Electro starting to move on in, trying to get into better positions here. It's going to be very difficult to take down these players with such a height advantage. But either way, they want to take control of Gatka. If they get these kills, they double their loot essentially. They get way more meds and they get control of Gatka, which is inside the next zone. So it makes a lot of sense to try and commit to this gunfight here. They want to hold on to it. Kimmy tagged up heavy. Can't afford to peek anymore. Needs to heal that one up. And he will. That's going to be the M16 of QWERTY doing the damage there. Electropad is starting to wrap the left side and actually go all the way round. Kimmy looking to heal. But he's only on bandages right now. These guys have not got first aid kits. That could be lethal. If they get into a, a gunfight and they don't have the time to bandage up, that could result in their death. We'll see. Don't know why that always resets. Kimmy and Electro Panda, though, still holding strong. Gatka seems to be the terrible trio. Or the terrible trio? The 
that doesn't even make sense. There's four of them. Ignore me. While people are starting to move up, Moito has actually found himself across the bridge and up into the blue zone, so he's in safety. But still, people are beginning to move in on Gatka, and this is where things get dangerous. While these guys aren't in any trouble just yet, talking of trouble, trouble will be coming up. He's going to be pulling up as well. We hear a car uh, passing by. They could be getting shot at from Electropanda and Kimmy, but no, just avoiding that. Keeping shaking, making sure they stay mobile. Still quirting cross hold onto the top of the roof of Moito. There we see him finally making his way through, finally getting back into the map. And everyone passing each other in the vehicles, but no kills coming out just yet. It's actually going to be Panda stopping off at the drop, but that's a terrible decision to make. It's so open, and it's covered by so many players as well. He sits on the safe side. He can loot this as well. Let's see what's in it. It's an M24, an 8x and a 15x scope. This is an incredible drop. Not only is there a gun and ammo, but there's a military vest and adrenaline syringe. 15 times scopes are so rare, so they need to get on top of this and grab it. I think they just have. I think they've taken the M24. Pando now has that to play with, and they're going to be taking shots. But still, these players sit up on top of the hill. It's going to be Dream just firing down from above. They're taking great cover to hold on to this box. Because right now, assuming they take out the tires of the vehicle they're in, there's no way to escape for these two guys towards a drop. They're left in the open. Dream getting shot from the back, though. They're actually taking some fire. And they've got to reposition Sodia as well. Getting shot. And he gets down. That is so unfortunate. It's actually, I think, the guys over towards this side that are, that are shooting down upon them. From a real range. But they're hitting the shot. Sodia dropped dream gonna have to go for the revive and they've got the tree for cover so we're not going to be seeing others finish them off but again these are the winners from the first game ladies and gentlemen these are guys you don't want to be messing with still the drop is uh secured at least and they will get away they will drive off morpho just being a fish in the zone not got a lot of gear not got a teammate it seems just chilling just doing his thing you know just uh, having a nice swim there well, drop has been taken. I think it, it shows. Yeah, it shows it's still in there, but it has been taken. They've got the M24. We saw them use it. A 15 times scope as well is going to be lethal. Now they have control of this little village, but they're not in the next zone, and that's when they need to move on in. It's going to be Keen actually making his way in through with more. Uh, you know, they're, not, they're moving in. Up top of the hill as well. It's going to be Mino and Keen. Avatar towards the top. This guy was a, a dangerous present for them in the previous map. But this time they're going to be walking up onto his land. He holds onto the top of the hill. Hawken as well close by with his teammate. And this is a very interesting position here. Because right now, are Mamino and Keen going to start to walk up the mountain? Because the thing is, it's not in the zone. Not fully, at least. Avatar are going to have to move out of that in a second. We finally see Hawk and, and KT, uh, KTV group up, at least. And they're back in this one together. But Avatar, he, I mean, technically, while he's got the height advantage, a great position, he's going to have to move away into the hands of Keenan Mamino. Assuming they hold on to this position, because they are inside the zone, they'll easily be able to catch him out passing. I think they've seen each other. Avatar going to get dropped. Keen takes him down from range with an M416. And what a range for him to take him down. Swift kill. Keen and um, Mamino still stand strong. The gunshots will be heard. Hawken and KTV may be considering moving back up. I know there are, player clo there are players close. They're actually going to move on through. So Hawken looking to maybe take this fight. A dangerous one at that. Especially with the amount of, uh, amount of kills Mamino had in the previous game. 13 if I recall correctly. As he looks again. Checks all around and makes sure that it's not coming. He sees Hawk pe peeks out with mini 14 damage, but he takes loads as well. He's so tagged up, he needs to call for Keen for help, and he'll do exactly that. Peeks out wide as well, but they don't realize they're being wrapped from the right side. Hawk and tagged, Hawk and down, but he's still got his teammate coming in from the high ground. It's going to be KTV. Spots them both, but he's so open, so unaware. And while he does take down Keen, he'll get finished off by Mamino. A good tag team there from the duo, and they will find the frags to get themselves another kill. Keen, time to be revived as well. They can even loot the bodies of the players that they just killed if they want to venture outside into the blue. Or at least for one of them. One of them will be in. But they will live to fight another day. And that is uh, amazing, again, against all odds. But look at the damage being taken from pretty much everyone. We've only got a couple of people left in the zone. Into the games is now alone. He's lost his teammate in this building. And he's just trying to hold on to it for the time being. He's going to have players starting to push up. This is the only compound left in the entire zone. We've got a shack up here, a shack down there. Not really uh, many places to hide. We've got two in this shack. 
taking shots. They've spotted more. And this is where you want to just get as many kills as possible. Players are close. Get rid of all the threats that are nearby. And stop people from getting inside of the zone. Mel, uh, Mel going to be tagged up as well. Shot by into the games. Taking a lot of fire here. Going to have to heal up safely. Using a med kit as well. A big investment there. Maito. He's in the field once again. He's actually shooting down. He actually just took down Diaz's teammate. He's going to look to finish off the pair as well. Doesn't isn't a happy one. He's, uh, he's only happy with a double kill as he starts to move in. He has a grenade in his hand. Going in deep. The revive is up, but he spots them both. Switches to the rifle, but maybe he should have just taken the shot instead of messing around with nades. Make it now needed to be used. Ample time for them to start to push up on his position, but he'll be ready just in time. As they begin to reroute, they've got to run through this open field, and he spots them. He knows they're close, jumping and spotting them over the top. He takes one, but no, he gets taken down. That nade may have cost him his life. If he just went for the gunfight, he may have been able to take them both down. And now, Sadovnik and Diaz are going to start to move on up. Not sure if the drop has anything in it either. We'll, uh, we'll find out. No, it's empty. Huerti and Cross. The players from... Gat Karali are going to lose Cross on the way. QWERTY got to run. I don't think he can save him at this point. Just going to jump in the car and leave him to die. Either way, there's still two players next to him. And they're going to hear the car go right past. They don't want to go for the shot just in case he gets the zone before them. They just want to make it into the white and then start playing for the kills at least. But they're taking so many shots from such a range. They can't fire back on the top of the hill. Slicker and Smocky shooting down onto Diaz. He just gets inside of the zone and he will survive along with Sadovnik as well. But he's very exposed. Still open to that hill. Not sure if he's aware of the shots are coming from there, but it's going to be Troll actually getting taken down from a range. He goes down. It's going to be Diaz taking him. As the, uh, the players just getting inside of the zone have enough time to finish off another player. But they're still very exposed. And he still needs to be careful of the guys coming from the top of the hill because they are still here. Diaz looking for more. It's actually Megacore coming in from the back lines. He takes down both players. He wipes the squad. And now he's in the control. He's in a great position. Zone not for him, but he's got the man. He's got the hill advantage to play with. Trying to shoot at a range. Downs one player. Trying to get his teammate as well as he taps away with the M uh, M16. It's so far away, but he takes down both. Ridiculous from Megacore. He's just wiped two duos. Still Vov is close. And still DS and Sad Sadovnik need to cross, but so does Mega. He's only got 10 seconds left. Diaz going to start to make his way up to the top of the hill. He's going to be spotted. Megacore in the open. Has to get behind cover soon. Because, again, he doesn't have the time to play with. They just have to keep him pinned behind this tree. Because they are closer to the zone than he is. As it starts to come onto him, he's going to start to move. Into the open he goes. Diaz, will he take the shot? Will he focus? Just trying to get inside the zone. He's going to go for the shot, I think. Mega getting in so close by him. But look at the chunking that this is doing. He's down to half HP. Maybe even less. First aid kick comes out in the open as he tries to sit inside of this bush. I'd be surprised if Megacore made it all this way. He's going to need a hell of a lot of medical supplies to get in. They're shooting him. They're finishing him off. And he will be going down. Surely he does. Diaz and Sadovnik still holding strong as they come in from the south side of the zone. Mamino lost his teammate already. Keen is dead and he's going to try and come in to at least pick up the pieces. But he gets dropped into the games holding onto this building able to finish him off. And Guerti and into the games take control of this compound. Now it's theirs to play for. So they have full control. One duo here. We have two coming in from this side as well towards the north. Diaz and Sadovnik coming in from the south and Vov just stuck in the middle of all of this on his own. No teammates to back up. Zone going to start to come in a little bit more again. And right now there's not a lot of options here for Vov. He's got to make a move. He's still stuck outside the zone. He's still not in the white. And he's just holding onto the garage making sure no one's going to push out just in case but... Not a lot of time. He should not be going for kills. With no teammate to revive him. No teammate to back him up. He should just be playing the zone. Try and play things patient. Get into the white and move in and get the backstab kills. Kill the players who are already tagged up or down. And Bob spots another one. He sees Sadovnik can come in from the back lines. But this is exactly it. He doesn't take the preemptive shot. He moves into a closer position. Taking a very good choice here. As he starts to sneak up. They don't know he's here just yet. UAC taken from one player. But he gets down. Qwerty kills into the games. And now Bob going to move in on the back lines. Doesn't want to shoot too early. Let Sadovnik pass, and he wants to find both kills. He spots both players. Damage, but can he find the kills? He gets damage, but he goes down, and that'll be it. Diaz finishes off the, off the frag. It's Vov to fall outside of the play zone. And while he knocks Sadovnik down, he won't finish off both kills. To think he's tried for that long and only lost to Diaz. That is so unfortunate, but what a map that really was. 
Keen and Mamino making it into the top six. Diaz and Sadovnik, your victors for this match. And oh, how unfortunate for Vov. He really could have taken that sneak peek from the back and killed both players, but he tried to time it right. Unfortunately, they turned around. Great performance nonetheless and a great match. We're going to be going again for a break, and we'll be bringing you the finale of this series, the last map, in just a minute. <laughs> 